Hello, welcome to the Minimalist ADC. My name is Chris, and today I thought I'd turn on the camera and uh, respond to a Stasa 23 video that I saw yesterday that uh, interested me in the concept. So if you haven't seen it already, I'll link it down below. But he had a video from a subscriber or friend that wanted to know, hey, I'm getting into the knife game, and what are 10 pocket knives in the across these categories that will start a collection and so that collection that they had was a dress knife a fun fidget knife a lightweight knife budget under 70 dollars hard use corrosion resistant a slicer a front flipper a fifth pocket carry and a classic slash popular knife so i was looking around my collection and thinking if i was proposed this um this question, how would I respond to it? And so Stasa had the uh, idea to make this kind of a, an open tag video and have other people respond to it with their ideas and how they would go about creating this list. So uh, here's my take on it. So before I get started, I want to tell you how I put this list together. So I kind of wanted to give a take on this through the lens of how I do knife, knife collecting and how I source the knives that I'm getting. So. The original instructions were to keep it under $200-ish a knife, which I'm going to do my best to do, but I'm not going to be using retail prices. Uh, you see, I use uh, r slash knife swap on Reddit and a knife trading group on Facebook to source a lot of my knives. Um, you don't get them brand new in box. You're not the first owner. There may be some snail trails or um, little imperfections, but all the knives I have I use. So they're going to get them anyway. And for the most part, people in the hobby take care of their knives. And it's easy to see that they are well taken care of and not, you know, destroyed through the pictures. So you get, you see what you're getting before you buy it. But given that, let's start with the dress knife. I'm going to pick the tactile turn rock wall. The rock wall MSRP is about $300. So outside of uh, this gentleman's price range for this type of knife, and I understand that. However, the Rockwall is a very, very popular knife, which means a lot of people bought it, which means when they want to get other knives, they have to sell them a lot of times, and you can reap the benefits of that. So if you're on uh, r slash knife swap, um, by the way, the prices I'm going to give you, I looked before I started filming to see what the last sold price was for a lot of these. So that's the that's what I'm going with. You may find it a little more, a little less. Um, it's just going to depend on the, a, a, the market and who's selling what. But uh, the last one I saw sold was $180, which is a steal for this. Um, it's a classy little knife. It is a great little slicer. Uh, the ones now come in magnet cut, but you can find the some older ones that are in other steels. Uh, it just looks amazing for what it is. And it, fits perfectly in a suit pocket or something else and it just looks very gentlemanly to pull out this you know monochrome little guy that uh, will perform most of your EDC tasks uh, if you carry it every day. So that is my pick for a dress knife. The next one I'm going to go with the is the fun fidget knife and this is the only one I'm going to double up with Stasa because he was correct. Um, this is the Vision FG from Civivi. It's next design knife. It is a fidget monster. It's got thumb studs. It's got the super lock on the back that allows you to just flick it out, flick it back in, do the reverse flick. It's got a wonderful little uh, worn cliffy, upswepty, tonto y, I don't know how you describe this blade. Uh, ignore the ugly scales on it. I am doing a project where I plan on dyeing these. Uh, I'll try to film that and maybe put it up on the channel later to do an instructional video. But this thing is a fidget monster, and there you can't go wrong with this one. This one is fantastic, and Stasa got that one right. Well, he didn't get any of them wrong. He just, I agree with him 100% on that one. For the next one, we are going to go with a lightweight knife, and I'm just going to go with the bug out. Now, mine is rocking some titanium scales, so it's a little bit heavier than stock, but as far as a lightweight knife in the community, I just don't know how you go wrong with this. Um, it is an excellent EDC knife. It is a great little backpacking knife. Uh, it'll fit in running shorts because it doesn't weigh that much. Um, it's fantastic. I can't say uh, enough about it. But 
Uh, it's also a great modding platform. So if you're getting into the hobby and you want to mod, like I wanted to put titanium scales on it. I wanted to match the, the, the blue of the thumb stud with uh, blue hardware. So I got blue anodized screws. I got a blue um, pocket clip. The only thing I haven't sourced is a blue pivot, but when I do that, it'll be complete. But yeah, there's so many aftermarket parts for this and they, again, you can find these dirt cheap. Like finding one of these on the secondary, 125, 150 maybe, um, depending on condition. And then you can go from there, figure out what you want for blade steel because they come in a couple different steels and then tons and tons of handle variations or scale variations. So the next one, we're gonna do a budget under $70. So the easy thing to do would be a cop out and just tell you the Elementum. The Elementum's great. When someone asks me about their first knife, this is a lot of times what I tell them. Um, it's it's fantastic. If you don't have one, get one. Highly recommend it. But uh, the one I want to go with on this one is actually going to be this guy right here. This is the Kubi. I think it was a King. Man, I don't remember the exact name of it. But uh, it is a little lightweight um, front flipper. Uh, but it, it's just for what it is and how much it costs, you just can't go wrong with it because it the scales they are g10 but they are textured to look like canvas the the blade is actually came out of the box very sharp you get this big open area right here that allows you to middle finger flick it and also a um front flipper now the front flipper the the geometry on it i have a few qualms with it's not dysfunctional by any means it's just they could have made a millimeter or two higher to let you really get purchase on it but yeah, this little guy uh, finds its way in my pocket every now and again. I like it. It's fidgety, and um, I think it's a it's a good one from Kubi. Next one, we are going to jump to hard use knives, and this is the knife that I use anytime I'm doing a home project, or if I'm outside in the garden, or working in uh, my my wood shop downstairs. Is the Benchmade 940. This thing is a workhorse. It is. There's a reason why this is a legend in the knife market. So it's a rather lightweight knife. You got aluminum scales. You have this uh, purple anodized backspacer and a access lock with a awesome blade. The blade is much more blade than you think it is. It's quite long. It's good for poking. People sometimes use it for prying because it, it does get thicker up here on the spine. I don't recommend prying with your knives, but uh, it is a hell of a tool. And so I use this all the time. This is easily one of my favorite knives in my collection and one of the ones that gets hard used the most. It takes a beating and just does everything I need it to and holds a really sharp edge. Like it is not the thinnest behind the edge by any means, but it will take a wicked edge. And uh, if you need it to slice, it'll slice. So the next one we wanna go over is actually our corrosion resistant knife. So, this one right here is the Quiet Carry Drift. And now this one is in the stonewashed knurled and stonewashed blade configuration. So on, brand new on the website, I think it's 325. However, um, again, on Reddit or some of the other places I looked, you can currently get this for about 220, 210. I saw one uh, on the older post that someone was getting rid of one for 180. I don't know if that was, uh, if there's anything wrong with it at the time. I didn't look into it too deeply, but like I would expect to pay about 220 for this if I'm buying it on the secondary. And it is in uh, Vanek steel, which is of course rust proof, titanium handles, rust proof. Uh, the quiet carry stuff that is getting produced with the, these types of materials is the perfect knife if you're gonna be on the water or if you're gonna be in a high humidity area. Um, it's, it's very lightweight, it's very slicey, it looks good, so. The, this is I can't recommend this higher enough if you need a corrosion resistant knife to be quite honest with you most people don't need a corrosion resistant knife but for those that do this is fantastic and even if you don't it's a great little EDC um, you can't go wrong with a quiet carry so next we are going to talk about a slicer and this may be a controversial pick for a slicer but if I have a slicing task this is my go-to. If I'm cutting up cardboard, if I'm um, doing a project that requires me to just really go at it with, uh, with a blade to slice things apart, it's always going to be my Para 3. So the Para 3, uh, you can see it's got some tape residue on it. It just then gets used. Uh, this particular one is in S110V. 
Uh, it's held an edge exceptionally well. I've had to touch it up a little bit on the strop, but I've never had to sharpen it. And it just murders boxes. The full flat grind on these things, there's nothing to catch. Um, that's one thing I will point out here. So if we go back to the drift, you see we have this big uh, finger choil right here. It works great for choking up, but if you're pulling this thing through cardboard, more times than not, like you'll get the cardboard to slip off here and get stuck in this choil. And it's obnoxious. You have to pull it out and start again. Um, this is a great knife, but not, not the application that I'm looking for right here. Full flat grind. You have a little bit of a... Um, bump right here so that it keeps it keeps anything you're slicing in the blade area it's got a a great choke up point you can it's really comfortable and uh i think i think they're just wonderful knives like i like my spider co's this one is probably my favorite it finds its way in my pocket very often i think it looks sleek i think it's fun and usually if you, you know someone who's not a knife person you hand them this they're just amused by the um opening mechanism and closing mechanism. It's a fun thing to teach someone. So next on the list, we are going to go with the front flipper. And so for the front flipper, I got this guy for you. This is the Pina Raptor. So the Raptor is a, it may be more technically a top flipper, but you know, I think we're just splitting hairs there, but it's a fun little knife. And like there's, Front flippers are probably my favorite type of opening, so I have a bunch of them. But this one in particular I wanted to recommend because it's the, it's a unique blade shape among the ones that I've got on the table here. you got this really straight um, edge, very pokey right here. Uh, it's a wonderful little like whittling knife, and um, if you put it in the reverse grip, like the, you know, I call it the apple cut, it's great for that. Uh, it's got... A lot going for it. It's classy. It's got this like is it the Barlow look. Is that am I using that term correctly? Um, it's got the canvas micarta. It just looks great. It's like a, you could. This could even be my pick for a gentleman's knife. It looks good. It's small. It is a little imposing with its angular geometry, but it's not going to like freak anyone out at work. I don't think because it is rather small and like you could always you know open it up with two hands if you had to, if not to flick it on somebody, but. I like it. I think it's phenomenal, and uh, it is my choice for your top flipper, front flipper. And so that brings me to the fifth pocket carry, which I have a lot of thoughts on this subject because it's my preferred method of carry, and the knife I'm going to talk about here is my favorite knife in my collection because it's in my pocket every day. Uh, I, I work an office job. I don't need a large knife most of the time. I just need something to disappear in my pocket and have a blade when it's time to have a blade. So, this is the Pina Caballero. This thing is phenomenal. And again, this could fit into multiple categories here. I think this is easily a gentleman's knife. I think this could easily uh, tickle your fancy for a flint flipper, because that is that is its only opening mechanism, is this right here. Uh, it's all titanium construction with the canvas micarta inlays. Like I said, it, you, I guess you could pinch grip it and open it, but the only opening mechanism is the flipper. And it's phenomenal it, it fits my hand just perfectly this little choil right here where, where the recess comes out for the the uh, locking mechanism fits in my hand amazing the uh, action is phenomenal like you can flick it do the you know the over the top flick you can do the lighter flick it's it's just perfect like it fits in my pith, fit excuse me fifth pocket exceptionally well uh, it just disappears in there sometimes and uh, when it's when I need it it's available so this thing is phenomenal. It is a little on the pricier side. Like the MSRP on this is like 300, but I've seen them go on uh, knife swap for about 200, 220, 230, somewhere in that range, uh, depending on what you're looking for. And again, like you do have to hunt for the, these things if you're looking for a specific knife, because maybe the you want, like I want the canvas micarta, but maybe the, only the black micarta is for sale right now. So you may have to wait till someone's moving a canvas micarta one. You know, there is, there is the art of the, you know, waiting for it and finding what's right for you if you are going to go this method of knife acquisition. If you're looking for something a little bit cheaper than this, uh, one thing I will point you to is this one right here. This is the Vostied Bellamy. It is a flipper, but it, on the backside, traditional flipper, but it also has a front flipper as well. It is M390, at least this version is, and it's a clip point, which I don't think I have another clip point on this 
list. So it is a different blade style and it is buttery smooth when you close this guy. It's lovely. Textured micarta handles, titanium hardware, it's, it's nice. So the last one on here gave me a little bit of pause. It's the classic slash popular knife. And while there are knives that I could recommend in that, that genre, I'm just gonna go ahead and point your attention to like, let's say these three knives that I've already discussed today. Benchmade 940 is iconic. The Bug Out, like everyone has one. It is one of the most popular pocket knives on the planet. As is the, the Para series, like the Para 2, Para 3. They are um, omnipresent in the knife world. So I think that slot is already filled for you. You have a classic slash popular knife over here. So with this extra budget, what my suggestion is, find something that you like. Once you... Once you've uh, gone through these knives, so we have um, we have a liner lock, we have titanium hardware, we have a compression lock, we have a opening hole, we have an axis lock with a um, thumb stud, axis lock with a thumb stud. Uh, let's see, we have a super lock right here. We have a bolster lock here. So. With all these options and all these things to play around with, find what you like. Find what suits your fancy. Take these knives apart. Play with them. See how they work. What fits your hand. Do you need a four inch blade or is your daily task gonna be suited to this? Like I, I don't think a classic knife fits this list because it's already there. So many of these knives could easily fit the the other th things. Like this guy right here with this hollow grind, this is a slicing beast. But again, this is what my go-to slicer. So take this for what you will. I have my opinions because these are the knives I bought to fit these rolls. The, they fit my needs for what I want out of each of these um, rolls that ha you have listed. So this is my list. Uh, I'd be very interested to hear if anyone else out there has a list like this of these types of rolls. And even if you have multiple knives that fit the same genre, you might not need 10 knives. Some people's collection is just three knives and that suits them just fine. And that is how they collect and how they enjoy the hobby. So um, Stasa, thank you so much for putting this prompt out for people to talk about. And I very much appreciate it. Y'all have a great day and I'll see you on the next one.